Hello friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks workshop. Got a Martin guitar in the shop today. It's a HD28S, I believe it was. Let me look inside and double check that. Yes, that's right. It says custom uh, S. And that, uh, it has the slotted peg head. I believe that's what the S stands for. And a uh, nice guitar. The uh, bridge is pulling up on it really bad. We're going to have to take the bridge off and, and reset that and fix it. Um, it's got a real rough spot on the neck here. We're going to see if we can't smooth that out some. And a piece of binding on the back. And I'll lift it out of here and show you what I'm talking about. A piece of binding on the back has come loose, you can see here. So we're going to fix that too. And. Uh, I believe that's just about it. I'll bring you back as we get a little further along. I turned it over, thought I would work on the um, binding first. Go ahead and get that out of the way. What I do is I just take an uh, X-Acto knife. I, I pull the binding away with my finger like this. And then I just take a, the back edge of the X-Acto knife and use it like a scraper and go along the grooves and scrape off the old glue. Yeah, that actually worked pretty good. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you know, if you can clean off the loose stuff and anything like that, that just helps. Okay, you can see how I've masked off the area on both edges of the binding. The reason I do that is because the glue that I use for this is very uh, caustic uh, to the finish. Uh, it, I don't know if caustic's the right word, but it's, uh, it'll degrade the finish. It'll stick to the finish and actually uh, mar the finish. This particular glue is, is 527, Beacon 527. Now it's basically it's model airplane glue is what it amounts to. Um, I buy this in the craft section of Walmart but uh, it has to be an acetone based glue. Now they make a lot of different kinds that are acetone based. Uh, they make some that are rubberized and all that and you don't want that. You just want the plain old acetone or acetate glue. Um, it sort of melts the binding a little bit and it adheres to the wood. So with this uh, taped off now we can get in here and, and coat the glue to it. You don't need a whole lot of glue either. You, as a matter of fact uh, less is more and then working it back towards the seam to get it cleaned up as good as I can now I'll use a paper towel to wipe off any excess I'm just going to go ahead and hold pressure on it for about oh three or four minutes here and just kind of let it do its thing Held that there for several minutes and uh, I uh, stripped the uh, tape off and then I took just the edge of my fingernail and just worked very lightly along there to rub off any extra squeeze out of glue. Uh, that worked out fine. I noticed something else when you're sitting here looking at it like that for that length of time you notice other things. So you can actually see there is a gap right here. I can put my fingernail down in it. There's that an actual gap here if I can get it in camera. So anyway, this is pulled up. I can hold on to it and pull it up. Um, the problem is it shrunk. You can tell it shrunk because it shrunk down here on the end too and it shrunk up at this other end. Where, wherever there's a seam, it shrunk. So <laughs> the binding has just shrunk. This one's going to take a little bit more work to fix and not, not difficult. Uh, it's not going to pull back down in there uh, just by holding it. Uh, we'll have to wrap the string all the way around it, tighten it down. We'll have a different process for that. I'll show you that in just a moment. I decided to uh, wait on the back binding the, where I'm going to have to wrap around the body until after I do the bridge. I try to heat the bridge up here. This bridge is, uh, the saddle is glued in so it makes it awkward to heat this bridge up. Um, I have some cardboard on top of the guitar to just in case I would slip or something. Um, it also just kind of acts like a heat sink so the rest of the guitar doesn't get so hot. Um, I'm only touching the bridge with the iron. 
it helps to soften the glue a little bit. It, to be perfectly honest with you, it doesn't do that great. It helps. Um, if you were watching a TV program right now, this would be the point where they would say, do not try this at home. Um, if you've never done this before, it can end badly. Um, I've done it many, many, many times. Couldn't tell you how many times. Let's see if the saddle has loosened up any. It might have by now. Yep, it did. Came out. That makes it a lot easier to heat it up. that off and uh, start to uh, cut my way under very carefully just with the tip. The back side's pretty loose already. I can go under pretty far on the back side already. I uh, cleaned this very well. I took a scraper, scraped off the old glue off the top of the wood there. Um, I cleaned the back of this really good, got all the old glue off of it. And it split uh, underneath here a little bit, so what I'm going to do is just lift that up and get glue underneath there with a the brush, glue underneath, you know, make sure that glue's everywhere that it needs to be. Uh, get all that done real well first. Then we'll uh, put glue over the whole surface, put this on here, and we'll clamp her up. I'll bring you back when we get her clamped up. thought I'd show you that I've got glue over the whole surface. I've also put glue on the back, on the uh, bridge, and uh, we'll set her in place. I usually use uh, a couple of bridge pins to align it, the two outermost pins a little bit, to uh, just to kind of ensure that I'm getting it uh, in line. Okay, now you can see I've got longer clamps on here. They're uh, clamped up. I'm, and when I say tight, I don't mean like I'm cranking them down. I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm just, because that would cause damage to the top. You'd smush the wood and all that. So I'm just cranking them down snug. Just good and snug. And you can see it squeezed out a lot more glue that way. But, and that would be good enough for most people, but it's not for me. I'm going to take this little wedge and very lightly with this little plastic hammer, just drive it in there just a little bit. Not, not crazy hard, just a little bit. Because I want this back edge to be pressed down. That back edge is what always pulls up. And a wide glue joint is not strong. A very thin glue joint is very strong. That's my experience. That's the way I do it. Okay, now we got tons of glue squeeze out. Of course, I put tons of glue on there, so you should expect a lot of glue squeeze out. That doesn't mean it's squeezing out all the glue, trust me. There's no way you're going to do that. Not with this much pressure. I'm not squeezing it hard enough to squeeze out all the glue. Of course, while the glue's still fresh that's when you want to clean it up it's too late to clean it up after it's dry now in my opinion that's on there to stay i don't believe that's going to come loose tomorrow is today in other words it's day two of this project the bridge glued up just fine i've got it held right now upside down in a uh, pair of clamps mounted into my vise. It's mounted into the vise here, so this clamp is holding the guitar by the neck there. The reason is this piece of binding is pulled out. Uh, 4 30 seconds would be an eighth of an inch. This is about 3 30 seconds of an inch out right now as it's relaxed. I gotta be honest with you, I don't have a ton of faith that I'm going to be able to pull this back in and make it stay. The way I typically fix one of these when it's really pulled out like this is I cut it in, just make a nice fine edge cut.
then I just splice in a new piece of binding in between there. Problem is you see the patch. Now this is on the bottom side of the guitar for a right-handed guitar player, so it's not too bad and it's on the back. So it's not in a place that you're going to see obvious. But I always like to try to do the least invasive thing first. So I figure if this doesn't work, I can always cut it and splice a piece in there. So I'm going to go ahead. I've already cleaned the joint as best as I can. I've already taped it off really good. Now I'm going to put glue in here and I'm going to wrap this with some binding tape and some, um, some uh, string and try to pull, stretch this back out. Sometimes that glue will allow this plastic to stretch. It's like something Seamstress uses. It's a binding, cloth binding tape. It goes around the tail ends of dresses or something. I really don't know. But anyway, I wrapped it with that first. Then I wrapped string around that in, in addition to try to tighten it up. It did pull it up in there. Um, we're going to let it set for quite a long time before we take it off of there. Probably, well, at least eight hours, maybe 24 hours. Tomorrow is today again. This is uh, day three on this little project. Hasn't, I really haven't spent very much time on this project at all. Uh, just that it takes time for glue to dry and things. So that's why it's day three. But anyway, um, I'm gonna go ahead and unwrap this to see if this binding stuck. I have no idea if this is gonna hold or not. It's, uh, like I told you, I didn't have a lot of faith that this would hold, but uh, letting it set for 24 hours gives it the best chance. So let's just see what happens. We'll Looks really good. It's a little bit, uh, the glue mars the finish of the binding just a little bit, but we'll just take a razor blade and very carefully scrape that smooth and clean that back up. I'm going to take a single edge razor blade I'm using my fingers as a guide along the edge here and I will let the uh, blade extend just the just the width of the binding there and uh, scrape that uh, bad glue off this looks good here now I'll have to redrill these holes there's glue has filled in some of the holes a little bit so we'll redrill this and I'll bring you back as we get her set back up. You can see the uh, neck here is pretty rough and you can feel that it's it's rougher sometimes you see that and you don't really feel it it just you know you can see that there's a problem but you don't feel it well this one you can see it and feel it it's there's really pretty rough I don't know why but it kinda looks like there's been some additional finish put on this neck at one time or another um, and it looks like some of that's peeled back off or something like that um, I think what I'm going to do is lightly very lightly do some sanding on here with some very fine sandpaper and then buff it out and just see how that looks and uh, see if we can improve it some that way I sanded it very lightly with like 1500 grit sandpaper first and smoothed out all the little wrinkles that you could feel and then I took it to the buffing wheel and buffed on it a little while then I put some fine furniture paste wax on it and rubbed on that by hand then I took it over to the buffing wheel and buffed that some put several more coats of paste wax on there and while you can still see it you really don't feel it now it's uh, smooth uh, feels really good so I mean you can feel the slightest little bit of imperfection in one place but uh, compared to the way it felt before which was almost like a rasp uh, it feels real good now you can barely feel it at all Okay, we've got her all strung back up. Everything's pretty nice. There seems to be one little rattle. I don't know if you can hear that on the mic or not, but there's a rattle on the D string. So, I'm going to look that over and see what I can do to fix that. <laughs> 